Okay, go ahead. Hi guys, Aaron with Altera Arms, Chief Engineer here. I'm gonna talk about our muzzle brake today. We're gonna go over some of the ins and outs of the design, how we came up with that, and how we manufacture it here at the facility. I'm gonna start by telling you, this is what we call our V-Series brake. The V is very important here. It allows us to do a lot of things that a lot of other companies aren't doing so far. We'll see what happens. But what we've got is a directional brake that has angled the ports at 10 degrees on each side. Now, a lot of people say, oh, those angled ports, they come back and blast me when I shoot or they blast the guy next to me. Well, that's where this reverse V design comes into play. With the V design, hold on. What we get with the V design is it allows that gas to move forward and continue moving forward while it's also drawn back. So we get that parachute effect and collection of the gas coming out so it takes the recoil out but it doesn't push so much air back at the shooter we've also got some stuff going on inside the brake here that helps us split the gas and diffuse the gas and disrupt the gas so it doesn't come back around and hit the tail end of the bullet which robs you of accuracy the other thing we've been able to do with this v-style brake is take top ports out but we still get muzzle lift reduction because the top leg is shorter or longer than the the bottom leg so it catches the bottom first holds the muzzle down and then escapes out of the top but we have a symmetrical gas expansion on both sides so we don't have the accuracy robbing top ports anymore and as we look at this we'll break it out and we'll show you some of the parts inside we'll show you some cross-section views in CAD and the actual part we're gonna go through the machining process from start to finish and uh, fill you guys in on how it's done all right, you guys, we're gonna go over the design concept here a little bit more, and we're actually gonna open one of these up so you can see inside and what's going on. Now, when we designed this, we decided we were gonna look at all these different factors and figure out the best things we could do to get the most recoil reduction we could without robbing accuracy and uh, you know, hurting the shooter's ear um, or the guy next to him. Like, we want all these things to be as mitigated as much as possible, and that's what we were trying to accomplish. But I'm gonna open this up for you now and show you the internal workings of the V4 brake. We've already discussed the V-style uh, pattern here and the effects of that. But when we open it up, you're gonna see I've got some extra geometry inside here that's helping us accomplish all these things. If you look closely, there's fins that are helping me split and separate that gas. And then little dimples that are helping me disrupt and slow that gas so it can't come back around on the tail end of the bullet before the bullet's out of there. The disruption also helps disrupt the sound and the percussion coming back at the shooter. So what we've accomplished here, as we talked about, is getting way heavy recoil reduction, similar to a angled port brake. But we've taken away the accuracy robbing tail draft and the sound and percussion coming back on the shooter. Granted, we haven't reduced it all, but it's way better than your traditional rig. So now that we've looked inside here, let's go take a look at the same thing on the model. As you can see on the screen here, I've got my brake. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into a cross-section view for you so we can look at that stuff a little closer. We're gonna zoom in. You can see these fins are helping separate that gas. And you can see these dimples that are helping us catch and also disrupt and slow that gas flow coming back around on the bullet. Now, we spent a lot of time uh, running this through physics simulators and watching gas flow to figure out the perfect dimensions for these fins and where these dimples should be placed to make sure we were getting the most effective uh, recoil reduction while reducing some of these other effects of this style of brake. Let's uh, go ahead and go over to the machines and talk about how we make them here in-house. All right, you guys, this is the raw stock. Now, granted, we don't start with a piece this big. We start with a 12-foot stick of this raw stock, and it goes into the lathe. And what we do is we run this through cutting our center hole through the center, putting our 5 8 24 threaded hole in, and all our geometry there for the initial entry. It's cut down to diameter. We make this in five different diameters, 750, 825, 870, 920, 870, and 980. Uh, the 980 version, we also have a five port version in the 980 diameter for the big tactical guys that wanna add a little bit more. Once we run that through the lathe, 
and we have our diameter and our hole through we go ahead and load it up in the mill and we'll get some footage of that running and basically cut each one of those ports on each side and then it comes in and puts all the dimples in at that point we got a finished break after we deburr it of course so that's our break in a nutshell um, as you can see we accomplished the, most of the things we set out to do which was decrease that that recoil and not a, a heavy pulse recoil but an impulse recoil so it's right now it's not a slow over time recoil reduction um, we were able to keep that top lift down which is really important for not robbing accuracy we were able to keep the tail draft off of all the bullets so we're not robbing accuracy we're able to remove that top port so we're not taking accuracy away but in the end what we were able to do was create a brake that's not so abrasive on the ear it reduces recoil very effectively we're getting anywhere from 37 to 45 percent recoil reduction depending on caliber or cartridge and we're also saving the shooter a little bit he's not getting beat up so by, much by this brake but anyways, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for new stuff coming.